Good morning, everybody. How are we doing, guys? How are we doing? Happy New Year. Um, I was supposed to stream last week, right on, right on the New Year, but uh, you know how it is. Um, how are we doing? Ah, oh. how's your New Year been so far? Um, we're day six. Day six for me. Day five for you guys. Is uh, 2024 all it's cracked up to be so far? I think it. I think it is. I, th I think it's been pretty good so far. <clears throat> um, in fact, every day has been getting better for me. But that's probably because I was feeling pretty shit at the start of the year. So <laughs> that's easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was. I was sick. I was sick last week. Haven't been feeling very well. Um, I've been slowly getting better. Slowly getting better. So sleepy? Yeah, it's a sleepy year, isn't it? Sleepy year so far. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, I wanted to talk a little bit, a little bit about uh, what I was planning. Hang on. I've lost my tab. Here it is. Um, what I've been planning for 2024. Um, let me find that tweet. I think I lost it. So, on my 2024, in general, I want to, I want to, I want to get my, I want to make my YouTube channel a lot better. Um, so, I want it to become a, can I say real channel? Am I allowed to say that? Because <laughs> it doesn't feel like a real channel yet, does it? Um... I got some good videos, but they're not, it's not consistent. Um, that's the thing. I'd like to be way more consistent with my, with my videos. Um, hey, Alexander. We'll say hello to everybody. How are you doing? Wheel Skeleton, Pernicious Rose, Mud Snot. <laughs> what a great name. <laughs> and Alexander, how are we doing? Hope you had a great New Year's Eve in there in Australia. Let's celebrate New Year's Eve with my family this year. Some dry champagne from France. Wow. Um, no, my Christmas and New Year's were really quiet. Um, I've been house sitting by myself. I did all my Christmas stuff early. Um, and I think that was a mistake. Um, next year, I'm definitely not going to be by myself over the, the Christmas New Year's period, um, the holiday season. Um, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I think that was a bad idea. Um, but yeah, no, ne next year I definitely will. And usually I do, but. And Rebel Wolf, Cosmic Com, and Matt, how are we doing, guys? Um, but yeah, so what I want to do this year is, um, I talked a bit about this a little bit on the podcast, uh, not, not the latest one, but I think it was the one before it. How you doing, Blast Kenshi? Um, actually, the latest podcast did just come out, and you can watch that here. That came out this morning, actually. I haven't done a tweet about it yet. Um, so what I want to do is I want to get 100k views in the first week of each video is, is my goal. Um, so I want I want each video to be that sort of level of success. Um, I would like videos. One thing I didn't write down because it's something I definitely struggle with is I want videos much more frequently. I want a video every two weeks, but that does depend on what direction I go. Like if I go more of a Nexpo direction where each video is basically like a little movie 
Um, like it's just so such such good editing in Expo stuff. If I go that direction, then taking it longer is is acceptable. Uh, but you need the views to back it up, right? Hey, Dagger. Your plan is to succeed all this as aptitude test to gain admission to Hankin School of Economics. Oh wow. Economics, huh? I never had a brain for numbers. I I'm I'm gonna be real. I don't really understand tax. I don't know what credits is. Uh, people talk about like credit scores and that. I'm like I don't know. I've never. I had I had student loans, but that was it. I don't understand what credit is. Um, I don't understand any of that stuff. It's right over my head. <laughs> hey, Hap, how you doing? So yeah, um, I that's that's I don't I don't have like strict goals for ex exactly the videos I want to do because I'm still experimenting a bit. Um. I think in general, I do want to go that direction where um, each video is like high, like higher quality, but fewer videos is sort of the direction I would like to go. Um, and, you know, so I'd be happy to get like, you know, one video a month, what, something like that with that. So you tell the IRS agents you don't want taxes out and they come to collect them. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they accept that. It's, it's funny. Hey, doing, Mac? Um... I'd like to hit 1 million views on a video that I make in 2024. So I'd like to, I'd like a video that pops off like that, right? I'd love that. That's my goal. Uh, let's take an undergraduate in economics and put top grades there so I can become a prominent investment banker. Oh, wow. Have a decent life. Yeah, that's the goal, isn't it? Is to, to have a life, have a decent life. Um, that's my goal too. That's what I want out of YouTube. That's what I really want out of YouTube is I want to be able to make I want to make content that is, so my content isn't going as well as I hoped. And I'm not blaming the viewers for that. I'm, it's, it's my own fault that I haven't made something that people don't want to watch. So that's sort of, that's, that's sort of the undercurrent of all these goals here is that there's no, there's no single metric that is like, this is a good video. You know, this is a good video metric, right? They're, they're, that, that doesn't exist. But we can get close with views, with su subscribers, with uh, video retention, like how much of a video people watch. We can get pretty close to that. Um, so that's why all my goals are, are that. And people say you shouldn't make views your goals and these numbers your goals because it's outside of your control. But I don't, I don't agree. I don't really agree with that. Um, there is always a bit of randomness, right? It is. It always. It does feel like buying a lottery ticket with each each video, but it's the better you make a video, then the better it will do. Just straight up, right? Like Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast can take a YouTuber and then make them successful if they listen to him. Like he can just do that um, because he knows how YouTube works. Um, other people have done it where like Ludwig was famous for doing this, where he made a video and he got it to like, um, I think it was a hundred thousand views from a completely fresh channel, not using his name, not using his, his voice, anything like that, completely unlinked to him. And he did that because he knows how to work the system. Um, so it's, you know, there's, um, it, it's not entirely outside of your control is, is what I'm saying. Uh, it is a little bit like, you know. I mean, I think Mr. Beast says it's like 1% outside of your control. 99% is just your own talent. And I, I'm i going to listen to Mr. Beast over, over pretty much anybody else in this in this regard, right? Um, and that's sort of how I look at it. It's like, if I make a good enough video, then people will watch it. And I have had... Like, I like... I love Fear and Hunger, and I love... And I've, I've really enjoyed doing videos for it, but it feels like a bit of a crutch for me because nobody else is doing Fear and Hunger law law videos people are more people started doing them now but at, when i when i did my big ones nobody else had done anything like it and so i was the only game in town and so it felt like a bit of a crutch like well of course they're gonna watch mine there's no other ones and i look back at them now and i think those videos are pretty low quality and yeah i i think you can actually you can actually see my content getting way better as it goes, like I think that my latest video, my uh, oh sorry, not, my, not 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 the secrets video, um, I did make that one pretty quickly. Um, my tragic stories of fear and hunger video, I think that's my best video to date, and I thought the one before that was my best video to date, and then before that and before that, so I that's sort of how I, how I look at it, right? Like I thought, I thought my meta horror before tragic stories, I thought my meta horror one was my, my best video today. I'm, I'm really proud of that meta horror one, by the way. 
um, and and so on. And I think that my my tragic stories and my meta horror ones are like a you could put them on a fresh channel. It would be completely it's completely different to my other content. So so um, that's where that's sort of direction I want to go is is uh, videos with with better editing and that. And I think that um yeah I just I just think that it it feels like a bit of a crutch for me so far. And I would like I would like to people to come to my channel for me and not. To come for fear and hunger, if that makes sense. And I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna like stop as soon as as soon as my videos get popular, right? I'm not gonna stop on a dime and not do any more fear and hunger stuff. Like I love fear and hunger. Um, I think I think it's an amazing series, and I still have a big list of videos that I want to cover. And no matter else what happens, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna finish up the, the list of videos up at the very least, right? And then you know when when fear and hunger three comes out in in five years, you know we'll see, but. Yeah, Monopoly's falling apart. <laughs> yeah, voice is quite nice to listen to, so I think you definitely have a shot. I've watched your selfie video and enjoyed it. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I have been. It's funny. Every every YouTuber's voice changes over their career. Uh, mine has quite a bit because you just get better at, at speaking. Um, uh, good goal of being a great YouTuber provide good content. YouTube you will enjoy. Don't worry about economics and finance. You can always entrust me as your personal soul good. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, don't forget your fungus spinoff in Finland. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll cover. I'll cover all the spinoffs too. I promise you. I'll, I'll do at least. I'll do like each video will at least get one. Each each game will at least get one good video on it at the very least. Like your rapid fire and reactive way of speaking more than your thought out videos. Not anything to do with quality, but personal preference. Yeah, I I do feel like my streams are completely different than my actual videos. Um, and I. <laughs> And I wonder if people get a bit of whiplash coming between them. <laughs> I can speak. I'll speak in my YouTuber voice for a little bit then. <clears throat> anyway, wish you good fortune in your career on YouTube. I look forward to your Olivia gameplay when the Termina up update gets actual. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to the update too. I'm I'm still trying to decide who I'm going to actually play it through with. We're probably not going to get. We're probably not going to get a new character. If we were, then obviously I'd want to play as them. But I've finished the game multiple times with each character, so it'll. I don't know who I'm going to choose. Maybe I'll let I'm at chat decide. Maybe for the first playthrough, we'll go someone easy like Marco, so we can like smash a content out because there will be a bit of a content race. That's how it works, right? A content race. So we'll have to do that. Like, I'm, I'm literally going to be, no matter what time of day the update comes out, I'm going to be wake, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to stream because I asked Miro personally when to give us a heads up of at least a couple of days when the update comes out. So, so I can plan my streams in such a head. I'm going to be making streams, I'm going to be making videos, and I know everybody else is going to do the same. Propeller's going to do the same, Raccoon's going to do the same, uh, probably not Bones, he doesn't like, he doesn't like Terminator. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, that's, that's how it's going to work. Um, even if it's at like 1am for me, it's happening. I'm getting up, I'm smashing a Red Bull, and we're going to be playing it. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to get all of the content out. And I'm probably going to miss some stuff because I can't go through the code like for Polo can. And for Polo's probably going to miss stuff on his first playthrough too. Like that's just how, you know, and, and, and Raccoon and anybody else who covers it, right? So that's just how it works. If you plan on branching out from Funga into other games of similar content, such as dark fantasy or depressing yet hopeful themes, or are you going further than just the games and into the genre itself? I would prefer to... I would prefer to branch out into horror in general, and you can sort of see that in my meta horror video, where what I would like to do is I would like to pick genres, pick sub-genres that don't get a lot of coverage. Now, meta horror has, but the other ideas I have for it, um, I I don't want to spoil them yet, but you, you might be able to, you might get a good idea from what I've been playing. Um... I want to pick like a subgenre, a, a, a niche subgenre, and then look at the look at the media that uses that. So, 
movies, games, I, even considering like books as well. Like the next one is going to have uh, the next the next one is going to cover anime, games, uh, books. Um, now did I did I come up with movies for it yet? I don't think I found a movie for it yet. It it shouldn't be that hard. It really shouldn't be that hard to find. A, I haven't thought about it yet, but I will I will find a movie for it too. So I wanna. Uh, I think they call it a cross media analysis. I think. Um. Uh. Let me just write that down so I don't forget to find a movie for it. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I did in in Meta Horror. Um, I was thinking about getting a book for it too, but I was a bit rushed with it. I I didn't finish it up. I didn't want to spend much longer than I did, so I didn't. I didn't cover any books, and I I really don't want to read House of Leaves. I don't want to read it. I'm not interested. If something gets that much coverage, I just instantly get disinterested in it. <laughs> in a corner of the market, like Nexpo, got his niche as you've seen with horror media. Yeah, I think that for the most part, you can cover a lot of the same topics as other YouTubers, and it's not that big of a deal. Um, as long as you do it well, you'll get viewers, right? So if somebody came along and covered the exact same topics that I did, like 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 literally just made remade my videos but made them better, they they'd get more views. That's just how YouTube works. And, and and vice versa, if I if I like looked at somebody else who had less views and they had a cool video, and I just I just took that and then I remade it in my own version, like you know like someone not like word for word, right? But like someone took my theory of the sun god, right? And remade that video, but better, and like different organization, different script, and whatever. You just took the core idea. Um, it would get better. It would get more views. That's just how it works. Um, although, although with niche, with niche stuff like Fear and Hunger, it does depend on interest, the interest of viewers. I don't think that releasing a video like that now that was better would get as many views as those videos did because there was that big burst of external interest. That is that is a, a bit of a random factor as well. It's a it's a big burst of external interest. So. So yeah, if I release those videos today, they wouldn't do half as well. They it just they just simply they just simply wouldn't. If even if I made them better, if I made them ten times better, they they wouldn't do half as well. Um. Because the the amount of viewers has actually shrunk. That being said, Fear and Hunger will get some more renewed interest when when other people start playing it again, like because because we, we know there are some 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 more interest coming in but in the usual circumstances you get one big wave so it's mouse day hey hey dark day hearts wish hello miss cook how are we doing uh along the lines try the game northern journey mandalore gaming's uh not to plug another guys mandalore gaming it's like when you get to like that big it's like it's not it's not really a plug they're just sort of part of the culture right <laughs> let me write that down northern gaming mandalore it's like talking about next bar, it's like, yeah, they're just they're just part of it, right? Um Well they confirmed illiterate, absolutely, yeah. Cross media analysis, my beloved. <laughs> I am I am illiterate, absolutely. Uh, very happy streaming. Well, thank you very much. Um yeah, so what else did I want to do? I want to get yeah, one million views in video, establish diversity in content. I guess we talked about this. Yeah, so I do want to start branching out into other I'm not opposed to covering other games. Um but I just feel like it's going to be tough to find a game. I guess it's always a risk with YouTube videos, right? It's like, you know, can you afford to spend a hundred hours digging into this one random game that you know, you don't have no idea people are going to be interested. So, um, but that's sort of always the risk with, with YouTube, right? It's like, you never, you never a hundred percent know for certain. There's always that 1%. Are people going to be interested in this video? You don't know. Not even Mr. Beast knows that. That's why he says it's only 99%. Um, you know, theoretically, Mr. Beast could release a video tomorrow that gets barely any views. You know, a million views instead of the 100 million he usually gets, right? He could flop. He could. He could release a flop. He probably won't. Like, he 99%. Like, you know, I wouldn't take that bet, but it could happen. He could, he could release an absolute flop. Um... But yeah, so maybe I should take more risks and maybe I should, maybe I should cover another game. People keep telling me to, to look at 
Oh, what was that game? What was that game? Hang on, I was talking about it with my mates in the other day. Um, so give me one sec, let me find this game. Uh, Loon Acid. People can tell me to play Loon Acid. I might give it a go. I don't know. I don't want to promise anything, though. Uh, Mr. Beast releases Fungi video and he gets 10k <laughs> We forced 10 people to play the most hard, the most horrific game in gaming. <laughs> More than animated skits win. Um... Well, I, okay, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna release what I'm doing publicly just yet, but I am redoing my overlays, so I won't spoil it yet, but, so everything you see on screen now, like the TV, um, me, the chat, all the, all the, like, the layout is, uh, is an overlay, they call it. I'm redoing all of that. I'm redoing the transitions. I don't have transitions now. It just sort of fades in and out like this, right? Whoa, just fades, right? So the transition is just to fade. I'm redoing all of that. I'm going to redo my intro as well. Um, because I have a new model coming. So a new, a new VTuber model coming. And it's the same, it's the same design, but it's just a new model. Um, and I have, it's actually, it's actually little, it'll actually have face tracking and stuff. Um, which is pretty sick. Uh, face tracking? Body tracking. And... I wanted to redo all my stuff at the same time. So I need to get some... I need to get a whole bunch of new stuff there, actually. I need music. I need a bit more art. Let's run that down too. Ugh, I don't have an ETA on that, though. Um, I'm not rushing it because streaming isn't my focus. Um... PowerPoint transition. <laughs> yeah. Confirm new Niji Saji. Oh, I don't know. I've heard some uh, bad things about Niji Saji that I shouldn't repeat on stream. So I, I um, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't go work for them unless they made a very good deal. Um, and uh, yeah, let's leave it at that. They would have to make a very good deal for me to go work for them. Um, Yeah. Hey, Mintmon, how you doing? Um, where were we? Where were we up to? Uh, diversity and content, yes. Um, oh, yes, I want to get 100 patrons for my Patreon. Uh, that's one of my goals. Um, how many do I have at the moment? I have... Six. I have six patrons. So we've got 94 to go. <laughs> if you'd like to become a patron, then please go check it out. Um, <clears throat> hey, Gabriel, how you doing? Grill and cheese? Nice. Um, <clears throat> that's one of my goals, to get 100 patrons. Um, get a job this year or 30 bucks you. Thank you very much. Yeah, don't don't uh, donate or anything like that unless you can afford it. Definitely don't do that. Um, you know, even just watching the stuff, chatting in chat, throwing a like, um, subscribing, all that stuff, sharing the videos around, all that stuff really helps anyway. Um, um, I would like a much higher click-through rate on my thumbnails. So it's called CTR, and usually they say it's it's around it's under five percent is the CTR, and that it's always going to be low. It's always going to be really low. Hey Riley, how you doing? Thanks for coming in. Because YouTube will put your thumbnails up on the home screen and recommended everywhere it can, right on the end of videos, and. People will only click one. If they click anything, they'll only click one, right? So that means that the other 10 that are listed there don't get a click and their number goes down. That's if they click anything at all. Um, so having a high CTR, like having like a CTR above like 20%, I, I don't think there would be a, a single video with over a thousand views that has a CTR that high. Uh, I, I, would be, I would be stunned if there's a video, um, a big video, with um you know double digit ctr i want i want 10 ctr i want 10 percent. that's what that's my goal is to have thumbnails so good 
that my click-through rate is 10% of people that see it, click it. That'd be insane. But I think, but it's hard. I think it's hard because <clears throat> with YouTube, you want to have a low CTR because what you want it to do is to find the people who want to watch it, give it to them, and then say, oh, okay, we've given it to this amount of people, right? A lot of people like it, and so give it to more people. And then give it to more people and give it to, and keep giving it to more people until people stop clicking on it. So inevitably, I think the way the system works is you will always have a low CTR. Um, because YouTube will just keep recommending it. We'll just keep recommending it until it stops working. That's that's how you, that's how YouTube recommendations work usually. Uh, that's sort of that's in general. We don't know specifics. Nobody knows specifics. Not even YouTube knows specifics. Um, and if they did, they wouldn't tell us. Uh, but in general, the more people click on it, the more people will see it. So, um, but yeah, so you're always gonna have a low CTR, but I would like to get that up as high as possible. So maybe I might, I might say I want a, I want a 10% CTR at, at a week. Maybe, maybe we'll, maybe we'll say that 10% CTR at the end of the week, because then after that, it's like, okay, then it'll filter out some more, right? Or maybe, maybe like the first day, maybe 10% CTR at the first, let's say first day. That's when everybody will see it because that's when YouTube uh, gives you a bit of a boost in the algo after it gets uploaded. So we'll say that. We'll say 10 p.m. CPR at the, at the first day, as we'll say. And then after that, it's it's YouTube doing a thing, right? Ratio of users versus target audience is probably an insane number. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, every niche. Like not even Mr. Beast gets watched by everybody on the platform. If he did, he'd have billions of views each video, right? He wouldn't even be 10% of the platform, Mr. Beast. Like he wouldn't be. So yeah, the numbers would be uh, are insane. Um, and I want much higher retention in each video. So what retention means is how long people will watch a video for. So if you watch a video from start to finish, that's 100% retention. If you stop halfway through, then you've only given it 50% retention. And if you've got one person that watches it 100% through and one person that watches it 50% through, then the, the YouTube video has 75% average retention right it's average right um retention is usually pretty low because again for that same reason that it's so hard to find people that are truly even if you make perfect content for your niche eventually it will be recommended to people outside the niche and then they will watch it and realize it's not for them so you're never going to get big retention um and my retention, YouTube doesn't give an average for this, which is which is annoying. I, I couldn't find it. It probably does somewhere, but I couldn't find it. Um, but my retention is between twenty-five to fifty percent. I'm I would love it to be much higher than fifty percent. Um, I want I'm aiming aiming for eighty. Someone said that Mr. Peace says he doesn't even know anybody who hits seventy percent. Um, so eighty is pretty ballsy. <laughs> but you know that's the goal, right? Um, aim high. Aim high because then even if you fail, you've you've hit a pretty good pretty good goal. Um. So yeah, those are my goals. Those are my goals. Just to recap: 100k views in the first week, uh, 1 million views on a video on a new video, uh, diversity in content, 100 patrons, 10% CTR, 80% retention. So those are my goals for the year. Some of those goals are pretty insane, but you know, aim high. Uh, video game achievements that show how many users own a game have played it. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Never seen a Mr. Beast video. I never used to until I started getting into YouTube. And I'm like, well, he's basically the number one YouTuber, right? I think he's only beaten out by music channels. I think that's the only people that beat him up are music channels. Um, Or was it sports? I think a sports video beat him recently. But yeah, it's in general, it's like, it's like a, like a homegrown, pure backyard vtuber mr beast is, is the goat like just hands down the goat so i decided oh i'll watch him right he makes 20 minutes seem like one minute it's crazy it like it's it's ridiculous how good he is at youtube um i i recommend going and checking it out if you're if you're interested in in youtube or the business side of youtube at all like watch some of his videos and just see how good they are even if you're even if they're like the most random topic you don't give a shit about. Like, what was it like? Uh, we ate one dollar to uh, like a million dollar ice cream or something like that. I don't care about that. You watch it like, wow, that was a really good video. What the hell? 
Yeah, exactly. Like I'm not, I'm not a Mr. Beast stand. Like I don't, like I'm not, I don't like his content. I really respect him as a creator, though. Real, like I, I have uh, almost like an endless amount of respect for him as a creator. He's genius. <sighs> Guys from Pirate Software seem to know about the game because they exploded. Pirate Software. In which game? YouTube. Funga. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think it's I think it's worth looking at at why some people blow up and why they don't. Even though I don't want to make I don't ever want to make uh, videos like Mr. Beast right. I don't I don't want to I just don't want to do it. Um, that's just not my my cup of tea. Those IRL sort of videos. I'm just not interested in that. Uh, but it's worth looking at their storytelling techniques and how they do their things because there might be he's doing something right. He's doing something very right. <laughs> So it's worth looking at, at what he's doing and seeing if it applies to your own channel. And honestly, I have taken some lessons from him. I try to start my YouTube videos very quickly now. I used to have really long intros and you can get away with that uh, with the sort of video that I want to do, those sort of slower, more ponderous videos. But I feel like getting into it much quicker is just more interesting. Um when you're still trying to build an audience, which is what I'm trying to do. Like, you know, I do want to end up like next bar was like my, my pole star, right? I would, I would like to end up there, but you can do that when you already have a big audience like that. You can make the slower videos because people know what to expect. Nobody knows what to expect with mine now. Like I have a very, very small audience compared to him. Not, not nobody, right? But very few people know what to expect. So they're not willing to give it as much of a chance. So you had to be really careful with it. You have to tell them this is what you're going to get, and I am, and then and prove you will deliver it. You have to do that in about ten seconds. That's why at the start of my, at the start of my, uh, tragic stories of fear and hunger video, I'm like, yeah, we're going to talk about sad stuff. My favorite sad thing about the games is the graves, and I was just like, boom, just straight into it. Um, and it was still like a slower video, um, not quite as slow as next bow. Not not that that's a negative, but. It was a slower video, but it was still, like, just straight into the stories. Um, and I think I'm going to try and do that from now on. It's it can, it's tough, though. Like, when you got a, when you got a big lore video, it's like you have to sort of... Um, <laughs> you have to set the... You're right, you're right, have to set the stage, so... You have to set the mood. Um, it's, so, it's, it's tough to balance. There are, there are different rules for the different genres, definitely. Um, but I think that... What's my um What's my analytic for that one actually? I'm... Oh yeah, I got voice actors for that one too. That was great. Um engagement retention was okay. Yeah, pretty good actually. 33%. Um 33% at the end it was pretty good. Um for my next video coming out, okay, so the next one, um, it's, it's, everybody knows by now, right? It's, I'm, I'm working on the law of logic. Logic and the Yellow King. Because they're two, you can't understand logic without understanding the Yellow King. And you can't understand the Yellow King without understanding his goals and what he did. Um, so they're, I think they're, they're too interlinked, so... <clears throat> that's what the next video is about and i have four vas uh I've, they've all they've all recorded their stuff four vas they're excellent i'm i'm so hyped for it um and marcus from the last one has come back who did who did some va for the last one he's come back um and three three more people so three more people which is which is pretty pretty exciting and yeah the voices are i was listening to them like man these guys are good so i'm super hyped for that and um i was planning on doing some unique art for it like there's, there's unique art for the thumbnail by our, our friend friend of the channel pro creations has done art unique art for the thumbnail which looks which looks amazing um and 
and I was going to do art for the actual video itself, but I, I decided against it. I was going to tie it in with the Wizard of Oz, but Mira said that the red shoes from Ryla have nothing to do with Wizard of Oz or anything like that. So I was like, uh, I could force it, but then it would, it would probably end up feeling forced. So I'm like, okay, I just won't, I just won't do that. Um, maybe sometime in the future, because I think there are some interesting parallels, but are not enough for a lore video, right? So, doesn't understand any of it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, complicated. Not as complicated as Sulphur. Sulphur is definitely harder to understand, I think, than Logic. I'm hoping I get this video out before the before the update, and I, because I'm pretty sure the update will cover some things about logic that we don't haven't been clarified yet. Um. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble recording footage. That's just like what I talked about on on Twitter a while ago was that sometimes I have issues where I just um, struggle to work. My head just like blocks up. Just like just just clags up. <clears throat> and I have trouble working and that's what I've had for a couple of weeks. It's been pretty bad. Um, so I've been trying to uh, relax a bit. I, what I've been doing is I've been doing like, do one thing a day, just one thing a day and that's fine. And that's when I've been like organizing, <clears throat> organizing my new layouts, um, organizing the VA, um, recording the podcast, doing the stream, like simpler stuff, but it's still slowly moving forward. Or, you know, recording for like an hour. Um, and that's that sort of thing. And I'm slowly improving, slowly improving. Um, but yeah, it's been, and I'm, I'm really sorry about it. It's just, it's just unfortunate. It's a problem I've had for a, for a very long time where I just have periods where I just can't really struggle to work. In the past, it was really bad. I've got like six months where I couldn't do anything. Um, and it's not that bad these days, thankfully, but yeah, you know, nice pillows. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that that's why I didn't I didn't stream last week as well because I was just feeling I, I was like man I'm so flat it's not going to be a good stream I was like it's just not going to be a good stream because I'm here at the end of the day I'm here to entertain so um, that's why I don't like talking about it much because it's not that I don't think mental health isn't worth talking about I, it's just that I I'm here to give you guys good content is what I'm here for and that's what I try and do so. That's my primary goal. Um, so that's why I try. That's why I try and do. Um, that's why I don't, I don't talk about it much. Uh, I guess I do talk about it sometimes on Twitter, but Twitter's uh, Twitter's for me. That one's for me. Twitter is for me. <laughs> YouTube is for you guys. Twitter's for me. <laughs> hey Jennifer, how you doing? I understand that feeling. I got ADHD and we'll lock up and have something to do that day. Yeah, it it sucks, doesn't it? Um, anyway, anyway, I think that's all I wanted to discuss before we, before we got started. Um, how about we start watching some White Stag Education? Yeah, I've been pretty keen to watch this one for a while. Um, so <laughs> what happened was I messaged them. The only place I could find where to message them was on, because I don't like leaving comments on YouTube. It, it always it feels a bit weird to leave a comment on a YouTube video. Just like, hey, can I can I watch this on stream? Can I like make a video out of it? Can I monetize it? It feels awkward um, doing it in public like that, and it puts them in an awkward position too. Because then it's like, if they say no, are they bad guys? Are they like you know? So I don't I don't like doing it in public. Sometimes I have to. Um. <clears throat> um so I messaged them. The only place I could find to message them was on Instagram. And they didn't respond for like, for ages. Because I guess they don't often check. I mean, you know, I don't check Instagram either. I have an Instagram, but I don't use it. So, I, you know, it, it happens, right? Like I never check my email, so. <laughs> and. And. I didn't check for ages. And I checked the other day as I was finding out what I should, what I should watch this, this week. And they, they responded to me like two weeks, two weeks after. And it's been like a month. So I was, I was bad. I completely, I completely missed them too. So <laughs> we miss each other. Um, but yeah, so, um, yeah, that's good. And I've got another one lined up for 
next week as well, and I've got to find some more after that. So there's a lot of good ones out there. I might watch Teeny Toys. Actually, Teeny Toys is looking good. Um, watched a big uh, Nightmine video about Teeny Toys the other day. That was a good one. Or maybe what was the other one? What was the other one? Uh, Rapid Eyes. Rapid Eyes is alright. Glad you're hopefully feeling clearer today. Yeah, I am. I am. Oh, chronic artist block like what lately world. Yeah, it's it's tough. Seems we've been drawing a couple of days in a month. You get a drawing craze. The rest of the month is art block. Yeah. So it's a creative spark hits, and I'm too busy to draw or write. But when I have time, it's like let me out. Yeah, it it does suck, and that's I think that comes down to discipline. It's being able to work even when you don't want to. Um. Yeah, and I think that's as as you improve your discipline, that that will happen less and less. I feel. Okay. Yeah, so we're watching White Stag. Hang on, let me get uh, let me get the link for you guys. Here's the here's the channel. Go check out White Stag Education. You've probably heard of this one because they were they were popped off when they came out um a year ago. Yeah, yeah, about a year ago. Let's pause the BGM. And let's start watching. Let me know how the volume is, by the way. <laughs> this is great. Dan Savi. In collaboration with Ocean County Parks and Recreation. They've nailed this aesthetic, haven't they? Wow. Parking in the New Jersey Pine Barrens can be a wonderful experience, but it's not without its dangers. This tape will teach you the safe method so you can safely traverse the greatest trails on the East Coast. Wow, yeah. yeah. Safe. Stick to the trails. Oh. <laughs> We're going through. <clears throat> Acquire equipment. This is a nice slow burn, isn't it? They're blazing the trails? <gasps> On a hike, you should be prepared for any obstacle you may face. Yeah, don't follow the Blair Witch Twigs, absolutely. Use this checklist to acquire everything you need for a safe hike. Safe hikers checklist. Food, water, hiking boots, weather appropriate clothing, first aid kit, compass, hiking knife, flashlight. Yeah. Hiking knife? Did, are you supposed to have a hiking knife?
compass paired with a map will help when the unintended path becomes when the intended path becomes unclear. Check out as a meat grinder. <laughs> you can find a map at your at your park visitor center. Hey Nizadi, how you doing? Like a machete, or like a like a pocket knife. Fear the, <laughs> fear the forest. <laughs> yeah, buddy, I'm feeling really safe. Yeah, I need a combat shotgun. The, <laughs> the masked people have lived in the Pine Barrens for hundreds of years. Okay, now we're getting into it. An unholy entity holds dominion over the woods. The ablations augment its strength. If you hear the whistling, you are stumbled upon a false trail. Oh, what the hell? Oh, that's so creepy. Did you see that? Did you guys see that? See? Holy shit, that's so creepy. Oh, man. <laughs> They're Vanushka cultists. What the hell, guys? They're Vanushka cultists. Oh, that's so creepy. Evacuate. Finland Cylinder, Old God Influence. They're definitely... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we don't know if there's people there. They're, we only know that there's um, circles there. Well, there's people there now, actually. Ooh. <laughs> well, no, no, no. We need, to see, we need to see this guy's face. Can we get a good view of him? Oh, creepy. Like a bird mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a bird mask. <laughs> That's cool. Thank you for watching Pine Barrens Hiking Safety. <laughs> Stay so safe out there. Yeah. An after 10 production created by Stanley Cuts. Are this, is this the actual creator? Is that like a character? No, I think that's just a creator. <laughs> that was good. That was good. What do you guys think so far? I liked it. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, nice, simple, good intro to the series. Um, I wonder if that was made, it felt like that was made like it could be self-contained, like a nice little self-contained analog horror, but you could still build off it if you want to. And I think that's a good way of doing it. I think, it, I think it's good that your first one can be nice and self-contained, but still leave hooks to build off of if you, if you really want to. And that's probably tougher than it sounds. Um, like, you don't want to... I, I do think that it's... Because in a few of the series we've seen, the first episodes just aren't very good. Hey, Ember Flame, how are you doing? Horror stream? Absolutely. Yeah, we're watching White, uh, White Stag Education. Yeah, a lot of the times, uh, the first episodes and the ones we've seen have been pretty slow. And you need to be able to... This one was kind of slow, but you still need to be like self-contained and have its own hook in there. And I don't know. I, th I, think, I think if you if you set out and you say that the first one is, is entirely self-contained, if it flops, I don't have to make another one. Um, and it's, it tells a complete little story, and then it's, it's done. Um, I think that's a good way to, to think about your very first one. It's a good way to do that. And then if it does end up being successful, it does end up being pretty good, then make, you know, make some more and build off of it. But if, if, you, if it doesn't, um, you know, it's, you, know, you don't have to worry about it. And, and it, 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 
it sort of sh it should have proved to people that your series has something worth watching. Because if it if it doesn't, if it's just entirely set up and there's not like really much interesting happening and it's just really slow and um then it's like a lot of people would have stopped watching there. I think that I liked uh, Baroque Hour. I liked that as a whole, but that first episode of Baroque Hour was very weak. It was very weak. It was just creepy video. And in context, like in the context of the full series, it makes sense. It's the subliminal messages that they're sending out, right? So that is part of the whole series. But if I was like a, a viewer that wasn't sure about a series, and that's the first one I watched, I'd be like, oh, okay, it's just creepy video. I'm not like, what's the point of watching the rest? Um. So I think that I think it's a good way to think about it is to to try and tell a full little story in your first your very first one, and then after that you can do the little individual ones that um, are more experimental or very very specific, and only parts of the full story. But I think for the first one, I think it should be very self contained. If that makes sense, so kind of set the premise and atmosphere. I think I think what you have to do with the first one is you have to tell the people tell people that you can deliver. So one of the issues is, um, so people worry about AI content, right? AI content flooding the market, right? That's what people worry about. Um, I don't think much is going to change because we already have, we already have too much content for, for a person to ever be able to watch, right? If you tried to watch every single YouTube video, you just wouldn't be able to do it. If you tried, even if you tried to watch every single movie, it would take you a lifetime to do it or read every single book or anything like that. The problem isn't in the raw amount of content. The problem is in curation. So people will only watch stuff that people that they trust tell them is good. And in the rare times that people do go out and try and find their own stuff, they need to be convinced that it's good really quickly. You have minutes, depending on the genre. You have, you know, some genres you have seconds, right? Um, YouTube in like shorts or TikToks, you have seconds to prove to people that you're, you have you have good content. Um, <clears throat> in longer in analog horror, you do have a bit more time. People will give you five, ten minutes, I think. Um, so you have to prove that you can you you you're worth their time. You have to prove it. Um, people aren't going to sit there for an hour before it gets good. And, um, you know, people will do that with, uh, people, people are struggling to do that with movies, right? Unless they go to the cinema, which people are doing less and less. You have like in the movie, in these days, you have the first scene of a movie to prove that it's going to be what people want. Um, so <clears throat> you have to, you have to prove that you're worth watching is what, what I'm trying to say. Um, so you, you have minutes, if that, right? I would, I would go as far as to suggest that you probably have about 60 seconds to prove it. Like it would... You'd have to, you'd have to look at the analytics in these videos to know for certain. I, I do feel like you'd probably have you'd probably have about five minutes for analog horror because people expect slower burns in analog horror. But I wouldn't be shocked if it was like one or two minutes, and then people just just go, okay, I don't care. Um, <clears throat> this one may have been. I think this was personally. I think this was as a touch too slow at the start, just a touch. I would, I would like wind it back a little bit. Sorry, wind it up a little bit, just a little, just a little. Um, but it ended up the the ending. The second half was fantastic. First half just a little slow. Second half fantastic. I would, I would trim down the first half a little bit. Um, like yeah, like an elevator, exactly like an elevator pitch. You have, you have, you know, you have a couple of minutes to prove that you're worth watching. Like make them care. You have to make people care because if you don't, they won't. <laughs> they just won't. <laughs> You know, why should they? Okay, so you have to ask, right? And this is, what I, this is what I ask with my YouTube videos as well and my content in general. It's like, why should people watch this? Yo, Nazadi, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So like, why, why, should, why should people watch my video? Like, why? Like, you've got, you've got a million hours of footage uploaded to YouTube every day or something ridiculous, right? Why should they watch my content? So... Oh, we should we should do Greylock. Um, next week we're we're doing something else, but I should get on Greylock. You're right. I'll write that down. Um, next week we're doing 
uh, what was it called? What was it called? Uh, it's by Dark Mind. Um, what was that one called again? It was Basswood. Basswood County. We're watching Basswood County. Um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll click it now so you guys can check it out if for uh, if you like. Um, <clears throat> but we're watching that next week. Um, yeah, you have, like you have to, you have to, you have to ask yourself, why should people care about what I'm making? Should they care because it's good? Uh, it has to be pretty good. You, you have to, you have to really hook them, you know? Should they care because you made, because you spent the time working on it? No, people won't care because you spent the time working on it. People just, they just don't. You know, um, there's, you know, there's a million hours of, of footage uploaded every week of people that work very hard on it. That's not good enough. It's not good enough. It has to be good, and it has to tick those boxes. And you had you had to prove that you tick those boxes too. You can't bury it. You can't bury it twenty minutes into uh, an analog horror series. Why people should care? You, you just can't do that. People won't watch it. People won't stick around that long. So, not that this one did, and not that the ones we've, that we've watched have done that. Um, I think Baroque Hour got a bit close to that because it was slow. Um, but um, I keep picking on Baroque Hour. <laughs> Um, that was a second. I was just thinking about. I, I like Baroque Hour. I like. I really do like Baroque Hour. Um, it's just got a lot of flaws as well, along with side the positives. I think it's a real flawed gem. Baroque Hour is <laughs> <It's> the thing. <laughs> That's why I keep picking on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Um, so you've got to. You got to really. You got to really, really prove it right. Time is life's greatest currency. You got to convince people to spend on you. Exactly. Exactly. Um, especially, especially in today's era, people won't give you the time to, people just won't give you much time. You've got seconds, you know, assume you've got seconds. That's why, and we go back to Mr. Beast. That's why Mr. Beast, he's like, you know, today we're doing this. Let's get into it. And it's like, boom, it's like they're into it. It's done straight away. You don't have time to think. You can't give people time to think. If you give people time to think, that means they're not thinking about you, basically, is what's happening. And like, you know, when we're like, we're, as we're, as we're watching it, we're talking about different stuff, right? And that's part of our uh, reaction and commentary, right? But that's sort of the, sort of the point. But if, if you give people time to think, that means they're not thinking about when, when, when they're reading, when they're participating in media, when they're, you know, watching a video, watching a movie, listening to music, um, reading, any, anything like that. If they're thinking, they're not participating. So that they've taken a step back. And media, you don't want to do that. You want people to think afterwards. You don't want them to think during. So, uh, we have an information error. Real interlinked logic out. Absolutely, yeah. What about video essays where you want them to think? No, so you don't want them to think during it. Unless you explicitly stop and tell them and, and make a break and ask them a question, you don't want them to think. That's not what, that's not what media is. Media is... Um, the, the information that's coming in, you are supposed to package it in a way that people shut off their brain for a bit and let it flow into them. That's what, that's what the goal is. Because if they're thinking, that means they are, they are a split second away from clicking off your video, basically. Um, anytime there's a chance someone will click off their video, they'll take it. There's, there's a certain number of people that will take it. So that's why that's sort of um, that that's a common thing is any sort of obstruction in in shopping websites, right? In shopping websites, sign up websites, anything like that. If there's an obstruction, every single click, extra click that somebody has to make to purchase something means that people won't do it every single time. That's why every website has now like instant instant buy, like with single click, because it means people will buy more. So you can't give people a chance or, or force them in that, in that case, force them to think. You can't, you can't do that because then people will break out the spell you've cast on them. Um, prominent magicians of this era say that there is no difference between storytelling and magic. A wizard is somebody who is telling a story. And that's the truth. That's, that's what it is. Someone is telling a story. Yet they have you under their spell. And a good storyteller has you under their spell. Like Mr. Beast can make, can make 20 minutes feel like two minutes because he's such a masterful storyteller. <clears throat> so that's, 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 that's the whole point, right? 
You can bury it a bit as long as you give people a hint that something else is going on. Give people a reason to watch carefully or double check uh, the seemingly normal food. Yeah, so so sorry. When I when I said bury it, I mean that there does need to like it's okay to have stuff like later on in the videos, right? Like you know, um, extra plot developments and interesting stuff happening later on, right? But there needs to be some a really good reason for the person to stick around in the first first couple minutes. There has to be a really good reason. So, and I guess with analog horror. <clears throat> the the introduction is that promise like we'll go back to we'll go back to the start of here we'll go back here so because we know this is analog horror it's got a great aesthetic it's nailing the aesthetic right absolutely nailing it and that's sort of the hook like we know oh this is gonna this is gonna be a really authentic looking analog horror that's that's pretty unique that people have gone this far in making it look this authentic right so that's sort of the hook i think it, i think there could be something a little you know like maybe maybe how i would change it is that in these in these initial phrases here i would i would maybe put like a little nod towards the there's something mysterious. It, it's, it's, it's tough though. You've got to be careful because then it really gets, it's really easy to make it cheesy, right? So it's tough. It's, it's, it's sort of tough, isn't it? I would probably, I'd probably just trim it down is what I would probably do. So like it's, I guess, I guess suspicious markers. So this is the first creepy thing, like right here. Two minutes and 14 seconds in is the first creepy thing that happens. And I would, I would want that a lot sooner, I think. Is I, would, I would want that a lot sooner. Um, yeah. Like some sort of hint, some sort of innocuous hint. Maybe, maybe talk about missing people or something like that. Um, you know national park disappearances something something earlier is what i would i would think would be ideal um and then like the second half like after that point it's great like after that it's it's pretty solid for the, for the last half of it so kind of feel like you aren't quite uh including the idea that people want to be immersed in a case of not thinking more so you want them to think is the content you present them um I mean, that, that's what the immersion is, is, is letting it wash over you and not thinking about it. Like, good content, you will, your brain will basically be turned off and you will just be focused on what's happening. Like, a good game, good anything like that. Although, I guess games are a bit different, aren't they? Because you actively do have to think there sometimes, like, you know, with puzzle games or, or what have you. I guess a little bit different. You only for the next second to see if their thoughts and ideas are proven, disproven, or thrown off completely as they continue to live in the world you present them. Okay. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. We'll consider that. Okay, next one. Christmas Eve, candlelight service, white stag education. Um, th I don't think this one has, like, uh, relevant, relevant descriptions, so I don't think we need to look at them. <clears throat> Christmas Eve, candlelight service. Hey, Golf Rocks, how you doing? Sincere observation, yeah. Hosted by the Grandwood Church of the Pines. And look, Hara loves religion, doesn't it? Why do you think that is? Why do you think that is? Why do you think analog horror leans so heavily into religion? Is it, is it just because of Mandela County? Do you, think that, do you think that caused it? Because Mandela County set the stage and was like, was so influential that everybody's like, well, we've got to include, that is sort of naturally, that is sort of naturally lean towards religion now. <laughs> Honestly, disagree on saying it's not thinking. When I read a story, I'm actually thinking about it because it's how I'm engaging with it immersively. Okay. Religion is terrifying. It's not terrifying. 
Because the satanic panic in the 1980s. Oh. Oh. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. Like most people are into it a kind of a strange religion, as in like, they're very distant from it, as an outsider it does seem kind of weird. Religion holds more stronghold over people and can be very mysterious. Segways, easy to supernatural plots. Yeah. Yeah. It does. <clears throat> yeah, like it's I think I think you're you're right there on those. On all those suggestions actually. Um yeah. I think those are great suggestions. Yeah. Religion is mysterious by default, isn't it? All religion is. And it does seem pretty strange from the outside. Seems very alien. Um, and yeah, there was that big, big influence of things like the Satanic Panic around these times that these videos would have been filmed, so. We should just make great horror. Look at The Exorcist, for example. Yeah, that's true. Religion does make good horror. Consider religion can be terrifying. People who are very deep in their beliefs will hold on to it even if it's wrong with their dying breath. Well, nobody ever thinks that what they're doing is wrong, do they? Religious imagery is just cool as hell. It is, it is super cool. Religious imagery is really cool. Religion is surprisingly tied to the horror genre. Yeah, religion and horror sort of do go hand in hand quite well, don't they? To have, like, basically forever. Christian imagery depicts the highest good. It's easy to invert that and portray evil. Well, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the inversion of good and evil is, you know, straight from Mandela County, isn't it? You know, the highest good is the, the, the lowest evil as well, but, you know, because the, the whole thing with Satan replacing, replacing Jesus. Was it? Yeah, it was. It's, it's been ages since. I'm pretty sure it was Satan replaced Jesus. Um... Um, that's sort of the, the core idea of Mandela County, I believe. Um, yeah. Because Christianity does, does include both of those ideas, the, the, the goodest good and the evilest evil. <laughs> Which is also super personal. Seeing something so personal being warped is spooky too. That's true, yeah. Ratio of religious horror films to non-religious horror films. I think that... Especially these days, non-religious is, is definitely a lot bigger. But I think when... There seem to be more religious horror films when religion was more prominent. Because it's a lot less prominent these days. Well, sorry, sorry, specifically Christianity. Um, whatever, the, whatever the current religion is, that's when you start getting more horror movies about it. But it's, not, it's, never, it's never ubiquitous, I think, you know. This should be pretty terrifying if you think too hard. Example, demi-human godly being whose followers eat and drink their body and blood for centuries is horrifying in thought. Yeah. I can see, I can understand why these things are weird to outsiders, even if they make perfect sense from inside, right? Religion horror adds interesting existential dread to it. The worry of what lies beyond and what can soft lock you after death. Yeah, that's, that's a good point too. It's because it's not, it's not just a worldly horror, right? It's not just, oh, you die and get eaten. And then, and then it's like, okay, so it's just over then, right? It's like, no, 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 no. It's your eternal soul here. And that's, that's sort of, even if, even if the series doesn't really talk about that explicitly, that's sort of what is brought in with the imagery, right? It's grandfathered in, so. Highest all meat is the lowest soul for God. <laughs> Blame religion for creating the image of what's good and evil. Um, no, I think people always have an idea of what's good and evil. Uh, religion just codifies it. Christianity are the most extreme version. What's uses fear to keep people in line too? So it's somewhat baked in. Um, every culture uses fear to, to keep people in line. Um, you know, like uh, like currently the fear <clears throat> fear of, of one one wrong word you said ten years ago can get you fired for a while. There, it's less so like right now, but you know, five years ago that was that was happening. Or or saying saying a bad joke and someone overhears it, and you get fired. Two people got fired. That was the, that was like one of the first big things in, uh, what would you call it? Like cancel culture? I guess you call it that. But there's two guys joking around at like a, uh, uh, a tech convention. 
and someone overheard them and then posted their faces on Twitter and got them fired. I think that was like the first big Twitter fire cancellation thing. Um, and people, people love using fear to keep others in line, so. Have you seen Greylock? No, I haven't. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check it out, though, for sure. I've, I watched the first episode, and I'm like, this seems like generic, like, analog horror. And I was like, ah, I don't really want to watch it. Um, uh, but everyone keeps telling me to watch it, so I guess I will now. <laughs> I'll, try and get it, I'll try and get it for um, a stream, so. The whole loose lips sink ships thing during World War II. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that had a, a definitely a more practical effect than, than say, uh, well, I guess the religious stuff does have a practical effect, but it's more of like a follow-on effect. But that one, that one definitely did have a, have a thing, right? Um, but, you know, people, uh, you know, people always use the stick and the carrot. It's, that's not, um, that's not uh, alien to really any, any culture, really. And, you know, that, that comes baked in with good and evil. The evil's always the other, and, and um, the good is always, always the people inside. And it is important to, to have those ideas. Uh, you know, you, you, can, you can act on them in better ways than some societies have done. Um, but having those ideas are important to keep social cohesion. So you're always gonna, we're always going to see that in, in humanity. We're never going to get rid of it. It will never go away. Because that's just how, how humans work. That's just what they do. So... Anyway, let's keep watching. Presented by Pastor George Robinson. Should we be writing these names down? We should probably write these names down, shouldn't we? Um, okay, so Pastor George Robertson. Who was the last one? Hosted by Grandwood Church of the Pines. Grandwood church of the pines so this must be right next to the pine barons is there another name no i think that was i think that's all the names yeah here we go <clears throat> sometimes what happens to you before during or after just death camp or your trip to the afterlife <laughs> the stick fear the carrot hunger <laughs> remember i meant to ask you if you've heard of the game dev yames before yames i haven't i'll write that down Games, games. I haven't, no. <clears throat> Recorded by Dan Savi and Luke Bale. Oh, Dan Savi was made the first one. Savi, Luke Bale. Special thanks. Ooh, I'm not going to write that down. <laughs> I think we'll, we'll just look at them. Christmas. Christmas is a time for people to come together. So true. Friends, families, enemies, warring nations to celebrate the great gift God has given us this day. His Son, Jesus Christ. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So true. Our Lord has given us creation and the opportunity to do with it as we wish. Um, we have the choice to sin or to be faithful. Our Lord has given us his son to undo Eve and Adam's original sin. Jesus showed us that even with free will, we can live a life free of sin. Yeah. Enoch 21.4 There too I beheld seven stars of heaven bound in it together like great mountains and like a blazing fire. I exclaimed for what species of crime have they been bound and why have they been removed to this place? Hang on, isn't the book of Enoch um, apocryphal? 
<clears throat> or is it? Yeah, it was removed from the Bible. <laughs> yeah, this talks about uh, the Nephilim. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, not not canon. Okay. <laughs> I haven't chosen to sin. Well, we all we all choose to sin. We all choose to sin. I'm trying not to. You need a reminder that we are all sinners. See the Eldritch Horror are sort of offshoot to religious horror in a way. Like they do have gods, but something far more terrifying than compose a fate worse than eating death. Yeah. <clears throat> I would say it definitely is. Um they they're often overlapped. Um I feel like this is this is where this one's going, they're overlapping. Um, but they're very, they're very similar. You could, you could definitely say that they're, they're separate subgenres, but they can overlap very easily. Because they do have very similar themes, don't they? You know, like the, the biblically accurate angels horror. It's like, that's basically, that's, that's, that's almost literally Eldritch horror, right? Just, just, uh, just Christian, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, <yeah. clears throat> One of the holy angels who was with me and who conducted me answered, Enoch, wherefore dost thou ask? Wherefore reason with thyself and anxiously inquire? These are those of the stars which have transgressed the commandment of the Most High God and are here bound until the infinite number of the days of their crimes be completed. He's quoting one Enoch. Oh, okay, there's multiple Enochs, okay. <clears throat> That's error. Can you put them on your record? The basement door is over there. I hate you so much. Be quiet. I wonder if this is, this is Dan and Luke, the, the people who recorded it. <clears throat> Going downstairs somewhere. Holy shit! Be quiet. This will only take a second. So they. What the hell are they doing? <laughs> that didn't work. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that's the that's the uh that's the basement. Basement of the Church of Ormia. So what happened there? So I think it was Dan and Luke went to the basement to kill something. And it sounds like one of them got eaten. Because they they shot the thing and it didn't didn't stop it. <laughs> um maybe it was Luke because the first video only had Dan. It was recorded by Dan, the first one. So maybe this one is set beforehand? Maybe? Maybe. We'll see. Look at uh, this stuff gets a little tired when you jump from analog horror to analog horror, like seeing redacted in the SCP. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it, you do have to be... Um, clever about how you present it right um yeah you need to be pretty clever about how you present it without it getting tired should have two tapped it yeah they only shot it once didn't they okay let's watch the next one in to attain product information video 
The following video informational video was not produced by YSAG Education. We have redistributed this video for educational purposes only. The use of Intuitane domestic pill and similar products is highly discouraged. <laughs> what? Okay, what is Intuitane? So what, what, what's, so what's going on so far? We have, so we have the mask cult in the woods and then the church next to the woods, there's something in the basement. Could it be that the people in the church are the mask cult maybe? We didn't hear any whistling, so I don't know. I just want to ask, do you know how you're going to dress for the occasions? I'm having second thoughts of going to the bank today and Monday because I'm feeling lazy and want to watch YouTube. Going to dress for the occasion. Uh, I'm going to watch all of this, and then I'm going to play, um, what's it called again? Buckshot Roulette. Uh, maybe not a good little goody two-shoes today. Maybe not. Uh, we'll see. Why Stack logo goes hard? It does get pretty hard. Have to go, be able to return before the stream ends. Yeah, thanks for coming in, Mech. Really appreciate it. 100 percent concealed in the beer bottle. It is, it is a great logo, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's important, too, is having a good look. Having, having um, good... I said this, I said this uh, when watching uh, Baroque Hour. You need good screenshotable things. Wysag Education is great. Great logo for screenshots, isn't it? Over the past seven years, Genesis Technologies has been developing a drug that heightens the accuracy of human foresight. Oh boy, let's go. <laughs> this drug has been named Intuitane. This is funky. This informational video will analyze some of the tests and trials run by Genesis Technologies and disclose, disclose potential side effects of the Intuitane domestic pill. Well, let's see the side effects first. Test one, mouse and pitfall maze. A pitfall maze, you say. Two groups of 25 laboratory mice were placed in a pitfall maze with a piece of cheese on the opposite end. Mice in group two were each given 50 milligram dose of Intuitane, while group one acted as a control group. Hello, Dupus. What are you doing? In the first group, zero of the 25 mice successfully reached the cheese at the other end of the maze. Okay, so it all got owned by the pitfalls. We observe that the control mice prefer to take a direct route to the cheese and not make unnecessary turns, therefore falling victim to the pitfalls. Hmm. Yeah, thanks for coming in, Nick. Appreciate it. In the second group, 19 of the 25 mice successfully reached the cheese at the other end of the maze, making for 76% success rate. Wow, that's actually pretty good. Mice in the Intuitane group made turns to avoid pitfalls, even though the route was indirect. Interesting. Conclusion. Mice in group 1 followed their natural instinct to take the most direct route possible, leading them into the pitfall. The 50 milligram dose of Intuitane allowed the mice in group 2 to go against their natural instinct and reach the end of the pitfall maze. And there's, there's actually been a lot of experiments that show that humans do have some level of, of intuition about events that haven't happened. I'm reading this too fast, aren't I? <laughs> My current intuition says no side effects. Test two, human and stoplight. Two groups of 25 human test subjects were sat in front of a stoplight. Group 1 acted as a control group, while test subjects in Group 2 were each given a 200 milligram dose of Intuitane. What are the chances that human experimentation goes horribly wrong? Um, pretty high. The test subjects were asked to verbally guess which colour the stoplight would glow at random, and the accuracy of their guesses was recorded. 50 milligrams is a pretty big amount for nearly any drug such as small specimen. Yeah, this is a good game test. <laughs> group 1. Out of 250 total guesses, Group 1 made 79 correct guesses, making for an approximate 31% of correct guess. This is close to the expected 33% correct guess rate. Yes. Group 2. 
Group 2. Out of 250 total guesses, Group 2 made 250 correct guesses, making for a correct rate of 100%. Oh my god! <laughs> Test subjects in Group 1 relied solely on chance to predict what colour the stoplight would glow while the intuition of the test subjects in Group 2 was heightened by Intuitane, allowing them to predict correctly every time. Okay. Potential side effects. Let's see. Let's see what it is. <laughs> Users of the Intuitane domestic pill have reported having more vivid and lifelike dreams while asleep. These dreams can cause paranoiac tendencies and insomnia. Better take pre-workout, Rich has taken two. <laughs> Daniel Carpenter's dream. Oh, we know them. We know them. Hey, yeah, good going, Henry. In Daniel's dream, he was standing in front of a group of masked humanoids. He recalled an immense amount of heat emanating from the large hole they surrounded. Oh wow, these are Vanushka cultures, aren't they? Jeepers. Daniel described this melody, which he'd learned from his dream. <laughs> This reminds me of that World of Horror segment in the woods. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three days after his dream, Daniel had a violent encounter with three of the masked humanoids from his dream. However, he did not come across the large hole in the ground. We had a void. <laughs> Thank you for watching the Intuitane product information video. <laughs> Is he okay? Yeah, he's fine. He's fine, I guess. But it's not gonna, we're just not, not gonna address that at all, are we? <laughs> oh, uh, original audio from five thirteen. Oh, okay. I didn't even notice. I was so into it. <laughs> Okay, next one. I already get bizarre realistic nightmares that side effect hate shit. <laughs> yeah, it didn't seem like any of those were bad though. Like Oops. Yeah, they weren't really bad, were they? There's a creature in Terminator that has a black ass head and butt naked can be found in deep woods without cultures. Oh yeah, they're called hairy men. They're in the files. Um, you were originally supposed to be able to fight them, but uh, they were cut for some reason. So it's a bit like Flatwoods monster. Oh, they do a bit, don't they? Yeah. You want an owl mask? It's kind of cool. Don't like the idea of a hell pit, though. Sorry, you've got to have both at the same time. It's hell pit and an owl mask, or no deal. Sorry. Okay, Stranger Danger Puppet. <laughs> there we go. We're going to puppet show straight away. What the hell? <laughs> Take 5,000 milligram, you ought to predict events years from now, maybe. Don't hope you I'm scared time. Oh, yeah. That was, a, that was a banger show, wasn't it? Forest Friends. Stranger Danger Special, created by Luke Bale and Dan Savi. Okay, so Luke's here. Tell all the other forest friends about you. 
my new friend. Say, would you like to come camping with us? Yes. You would? Great! There's going to be lots of fun activities, like hiking and fishing. And you'll even get to meet Ranger Luke. Oh, Ranger Luke, that's a new character. How quickly would the divorce rights... Divorce rate spike. Um, I don't. I think it would actually do the opposite. I think. All right, divorce rate spike. Get in my head now. Uh, Ranger Luke, new character. Here we go. Maybe one, but you're supposed to tell the Sesame Street bastard you're. Oh, did I? Did I miss it? Oh, uh, my name is Morley Doog. <laughs> oh no! That reminds me. I have to get packed. I'll be right back. Bye, Rex. All right, I don't need this. This could be what is useful, that? but no. This doesn't seem good to go camp camping with. Uh, I don't really like this thing. Oh, bananas are weird. Oh. oh. Rex, it's me, Anna. Okay, we have Anna. Okay, huh? Heart Puppet is Where's Anna. Rex? Wait. Who are you? I'm more I've they do. never met you before. All right, I'm ready to go camping. Oh, hey, a Anna. Meet my new friend. Meow. New friend? Rex, how do you know they're not a stranger? Well, I don't know. Maybe they are a stranger. But how can we know for sure? Let's go ask Ranger Luke. He knows everything about stranger yeah. danger. Let's go ask Ranger Luke. You're right. Come on, let's go camping. <laughs> stranger is a friend you haven't met yet, right? <laughs> this is this is cool. This is so much higher production than the other ones. This is great. Hey guys! Hi, Hi Ranger Luke! Luke. <laughs> you guys are just in time to set up camp. Anna and I have a very important question. Alrighty, Rex. What is it? <laughs> I met someone new today, and they seem really nice and great, but I don't know if they're a stranger or not. Naughty Sesame Street vibe? Yeah, it's great. Well, they certainly don't look like a stranger to me. Guys, do you reckon? Do you reckon I look like a stranger, or am I like nice and friendly? What do you guys think? I think I'm pretty. I'm pretty nice and friendly. Ranger Luke is a stranger. <laughs> stranger danger things. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ranger Luke. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hey, Ranger Yay, Luke. Hey, what a relief! Yeah, I'm so glad that I found an honest and true friend. Does like he keep you your glasses on? And yeah. not a stranger. Say, do you guys remember the ways to spot a stranger? Well, um... Not really. That's all right. We'll learn together with our new friend. Yay! Yay! Woo! Yeah, this this, uh, this sound effects are great. No way. Remember that story from way back Oh, this is when. awesome. If you can't recall, let me tell it again. <laughs> this is the story of Little Red. <laughs> the pit. <laughs> danger, danger. When they lurk around, tell the park ranger, stranger, danger. Don't trust the big bad wolf. Into the woods and through the trees. Red stuck to her path, nothing else to see. The sun was going down and she was almost there.
<laughs> this is great. <laughs> Oh, that got me. <laughs> that got me. <laughs> that was great. Oh, wow. This is massive. This is a massive episode. Anyway, this episode has been like five minutes. Wow, that was awesome. Awesome scare. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, awesome production value on this one. Above and beyond. Jump scares are loud. Doesn't scream at your face. Yeah, it was it was louder, but you sort of it sort of built up to it, like you knew it was coming, and I think that's good. Doesn't look creepy. It creeped me out. Not as creepy as some, that's for sure, but it creeped me out. Friends. If a stranger tries to touch you, you don't feel comfortable. Throw that bastard into a wood chipper. <laughs> oh, new puppets. This hike is so much fun, Gleason. Okay, so Oswald and Gleason. Oswald is a blue one. Blue puppet. Oswald. What's this? Green. Gleason. Okay. Come name is Gleason. <laughs> Mickey, yeah, Mickey Mouse. Uh, the original. It's it's only the original one though. It's not Mickey Mouse. It's um, Steamboat Willie. He's probably gonna find the actual train. Just maybe they're in the middle of nowhere. I agree, Oswald, but I'm exhausted from all this walking. You probably just dropped text note. <laughs> it's very important. Hey, uh, do you know where we are? Hmm. The oldest tree in the forest should be coming up soon. Well, how do you know that, Oswald? I feel like we've been walking forever. Well, Gleason, we've been following the trailblazers, so we'll be okay. Oh, oh, oh no, oh no, oh no. We forgot to use a map. Are we on a false trail? <gasps> What do you reckon, guys? And then a false trail? Definitely. It's okay. <sighs> do you hear the melody? That means the strangers aren't hunting. Well, as long as we stand still and be quiet, we'll be okay. Okay. That's interesting lore. As long as they are whistling, they're not hunting. So that's why you stand still and be quiet when that happens. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. We should be exhausted after carrying himself his whole childhood. No good parent names Jesse Gleason. <laughs> Poor Gleason. <laughs> Strangers harmonize and their adversary surfaces. What? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to glisten a fucking Hello, day. Hello, and welcome to Mr. Gungus' Game of the Day. Pig, Mr. Today, Gungus. we are going to be playing Spot the Stranger. Come on, let's go. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is this is gonna be a good scare, isn't it? Can you spot the stranger? This is gonna be such a good scare. Uh, yes, it's right there.
<laughs> See, this is like those analog horror things where it's like, here, this is this is the thing that's changed. And but they're usually kind of like it's overdone now. This is like works. This actually like makes sense as well in in the actual video. Like, yeah, it's an education video. They would do stuff like this. Guys, can you spot the stranger? Where is it? Is it Where is it, guys? Can you spot it? Can you spot the stranger? Left? Ah, here it is. Internally consistent. Yes. Uh, can you spot the adversary? <laughs> It rises beneath the forest. It's a snake. Hey, uh, Ranger Thank Luke. Thank you for playing. No, hang on. What's that text? Ranger Luke. Um, Ranger Luke, can you tell us a little bit, a little bit about the adversary, please? The burning swords protect us. Well, the angels had burning swords in the Bible, didn't they? Be a pretty bad problem if they have started to make education videos to this long-standing well-known issue yet. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for playing Mr. Gongus's game of the day. See you Lose next clues? time. <laughs> the sun set. The day is old. But we can't rest until our stories are told. Too loud. Now's the time of the night where we gather around the campfire and talk about everything we did today. So, Rex and Anna, what did you guys do today? Oh, oh, oh! Today, we went fishing! Love you, Rat. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I caught a whole lot of fish today. I think I caught the most. You may have caught the most, but I caught the biggest fish. Yeah, right. Well, what kinds of fish did you find? We caught some black banded sunfish, creek chub suckers, and even largemouth bass. Oh, yeah. We would have caught more, but we ran out of worms. Well, that sounds like a whole lot of fun, even if you did run out of worms. Yeah, we'll definitely remember to pack more for next time. Gleason and Oswald, what did you guys do today? We went hiking. Yeah. <laughs> well, that didn't sound too enthusiastic. Did you guys have fun? Well, <laughs> I had we enough. I call it fun. Oldest tree in the forest, but we got lost. And before we even knew it, it was too late. We heard the strangers whistling. What did it sound like? It was a song. And what did you do? We stopped, stayed quiet, and when we couldn't hear the song anymore, we turned around. Great job, Gleason and Oswald. Now, what would you have done if it wasn't a song they were whistling? <laughs> we would have closed our eyes and ran away. Great job! Hooray! Always remember, strangers have no regard for your well-being. They aren't like us. Do not follow them into the woods. No matter how friendly they look. <laughs> See you on another episode of Forest Friends! All living things In memory of the Grand Wood Fall. Rex. Oh no! Samuel Gleason. <laughs> oh no! Oh. <laughs> uh. 
All these, all these kids are they're based on the dead kids. <laughs> the day is old, but we can't rest until our stories are told. Oh, we can't rest until our stories are told. Oh, that's so ominous. <laughs> Oh no. So these kids were probably taken by strangers then, huh? Wow. <laughs> yeah, recontextualize, wow. Okay. So, yeah. The strangers are so common in the woods, they don't. They can't get rid of them, but they still have the park open. <laughs> open for hikes and stuff. Why? Why would you go there? <laughs> That's wild. I don't know, guys. Would you go? Would you go there? What was it? Would you go to Pine Barrens? I wouldn't go to Pine Barrens. Are you kidding? If I went, even if it wasn't, even if it wasn't like super common knowledge, right? Um. Even if it wasn't like super common knowledge and you go there and then they sit your family down and start playing these tapes, I'd be like, well, you know, it's been nice, but um, we're just going to go now. <laughs> we're just going to go, you know, you know, I think there was like a McDonald's back down the way. We'll just go to McDonald's instead. <laughs> we'll just go watch a movie. We'll go to the movies, guys. <laughs> we're not going to the murder forest. <laughs> Ranger Dan was a creepy wolf jump scare guy. Uh, no, that was part of the story. I think that's just like a generic cult member. I don't think that's him specifically. People are idiots. Well, haunted places are often sought after, especially by teens. That's true. Actually, yeah, that's true. But this place literally has the devil here, so... So looking for a fight, gotta level up, grind XP on stream. <laughs> yeah! It would be a good spot to grind, wouldn't it? Okay, next video. Okay, we only have one more. We only have one more. When did this one come out? Two months ago. Okay. Bit of a gap between them, isn't there? Grandwood Park Ranger Training. Oh, here we go. Another 10 minute one. Congratulations on being accepted into the Grand Wood Park Ranger Program. Yeah, yeah, it's like uh, Val Verde. You're on your way to fulfilling one of the most important niches in the New Jersey Pine Barrens ecosystem. However, there are still a few more basics you'll need to learn before you head out onto the field. Yeah. What are we watching? Meet Ranger Craig. What a unit! He's a new ranger here, just like you. We're watching um. White stag here. I'll get the link. This is the current, current one we're watching. Here you go. He's eager to protect and preserve. But wait, Craig. <gasps> I have wait, to tell Craig? you some things before you begin. Yeah, how you doing, Nigel? Thanks for coming in. Sub and okay. <laughs> Sub Alla Angeli. Sub Alla Angeli. Underneath something angel? What does Alla mean? Let's see. Let's Google it. Let's go translate. Sub Alla Angeli. Under those angels. Oh. Under angel wings. Okay. Alla is wings, is it? Oh, it's it's detecting Romanian. Why is it detecting Romanian? Go Latin. Under the wing of an angel. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's Latin. Yeah, it's, it, it detected Romanian. I guess it's close enough. <laughs> you may now choose to resign and leave the Grandwood Ranger program or continue with your training. If you choose to resign, notify your training supervisor immediately. You cannot resign later. The contents of this tape are highly confidential. This is your final warning. Well, with a warning like that, you sort of have to. You'd have to keep watching, right? 
Can it reside later? I think that's legal. Ah, uh, it's the government. They can do what they want. Remain in stealing the Latin language. I think everybody stole it. <laughs> Environmentally sensitive and unsafe areas. Just like any normal park ranger, you'll be given an assigned area to monitor. Your duty, above all else, is to protect park guests from any and all threats. While on patrol, you will notice trails without correct blazing or proper documentation on your map. These false trails lead to Inner Grandwood. Inner Grandwood. If you find a false trail not yet marked with a red triangle on your master map, take note of its approximate location and report it later. Visitors are prohibited from walking all false trails. If you see a visitor veering onto a false trail, kindly ask them to return to the marked trails. <laughs> if they refuse to acknowledge the question, <laughs> do not hesitate to aggress. <laughs> what? Do I hesitate to aggress? If you find a trail marker with no correlating mark on your master map, scrub the blaze off with a sponge and mineral spirits. Then, dry it with a clean cloth. This is a false trail. Make sure it is marked according to- Is this Gleason and Oswald? Yeah, but they died. Look at those legs. Yeah, he was pretty nice legs. Tempting sights and sounds? Guests come to Grandwood National Park to experience the best trails the Pine Barrens have to offer. There are many species of birds native to the park, making it a hot spot for bird watchers and ornithologists across the globe. Unfortunately, visitors oftentimes fall victim to clever imitation. Strangers are bipedal organisms that live in the park. Bipedal organisms? <laughs> they produce a whistling tone that sounds similar to birdsong. So they're not even human? There are two known whistling patterns strangers demonstrate. A distinct melodic pattern signifies a feeding gambit is underway. Feeding gambit? <laughs> A feeding gambit poses no immediate threat to trail-abiding visitors, but may lead them into unsafe territory. If Dark you see park <laughs> guests entranced by the stranger's song, kindly remind them to stay on the marked trails. Investigation of the feeding gambit is unnecessary and not worth the risk. Snake boy, let's go. Ranger can't run a meter. <laughs> Safe areas become unsafe. Sometimes, your designated area will fall victim to a hunting gambit. A hunting gambit on a marked trail is an uncommon act of desperation, but is still uncommon important act of to prepare desperation. for. What are they desperate for? You'll know a hunting gambit is in progress by the stranger's erratic whistling pattern. This whistling is how they communicate. Refer to your handbook for more information regarding how to further decipher stranger whistling patterns. During a hunting gambit, urge all nearby park visitors to close their eyes and run in the direction of your voice toward the start of the trail. <laughs> Report the active hunting gambit to Grandwood National Park headquarters via your handheld radio. A siren will sound to alert all other park rangers to evacuate their designated areas. If you hear the siren, lead all visitors back to the park entrance where a head count will take place. Once the head count has concluded, all park rangers will be dispatched to search for any unaccounted for visitors there will be so many in a national park. Subdue the hunting gambit. <laughs> a 
After dispersing, you will return to your designated area to subdue the hunting gambit and search for any unaccounted <laughs> He's getting a gun. Let's go. Fuck that. Nah, sorry, bro. Nah, they can have the park, bro. You, this you is yours. Any bodies. Strangers versus Mood Scorch. Who would win, actually? Strangers will not retreat unless enough sustenance is gathered or a majority of the advancing strangers are subdued. <laughs> oh, is Rangers that like... hunt in packs. This is the camp from the This is the camp from the um the puppet show. <laughs> so attempting to flee is futile. When you encounter a stranger, do not hesitate to aggress. Shoot him! Shoot him! Do not cease fire. No matter yes. how human their cries sound. <laughs> they have surrendered their body to the forest. You are doing them a service by freeing their soul. Oh, that's interesting. So they're not like... They're not like organisms that spring up. They're people who have been controlled by the forest, by something else inside them. So there's like an, an, an organism inside them that is controlling them. That makes sense. Bro, there's only one. There was like five of them. The forest of units for human vessels, absolutely. You should feel no guilt. Congratulations! This concludes the Grand Woods Park <laughs> Ranger training video. You will now be led to the physical training <laughs> course. Where you will be put to the test. Being a ranger here at Grandwood is a job unlike any other. And we're thrilled to have you on our side. I'm Ranger Dan. And I'm Ranger Luke. Hey, Ranger Luke. Stay safe out there. <laughs> hey. Oh, Ranger Dan, that's Dan Savi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was Ranger, there was Dan Savi was making the videos, the earlier videos, and then there was Ranger Luke as well who was making some of them. But then Ranger Luke vanished. At some point, I think Ranger Luke is dead, bros. I think, I think they went to the church. They, so in the second video, right? So in the second video, they filmed this. The Grandwood Church of the Pines, they filmed this. Recorded by Dan Savi and Luke Bale, and they're both rangers that we, sh that we saw at the end there. Um, but one of them dies at the end. They use that as cover to go underneath the church and try and kill whatever was under there. Um, see, Dan Savi, see, it's only, it's only Dan Savi now doing this in the, the very first one. But then we see at the end here, see Dan and, and Ranger Luke. So. <laughs> <laughs>
And and Ranger Craig is a new one, but he, I don't think Ranger Craig has showed up in any of the other ones. So we could probably build a bit of a timeline, I think. We build a bit of a timeline. So we've got episode episode one might be the latest. Um, episode two, so that's two. And so this one, episode five, is after episode four, which is Stranger Danger. When is episode three? I don't know. Intuitane. I don't think we have any, any information about Intuitane. I think it doesn't really matter where it goes. Wait, no, no, no. Uh, there's kids here. Do these kids? Margaret Pendleton's Dream. So it's about a never-before-televised puppet show. Okay, so yeah, this one is like might be the earliest episode then, Intuitane. So that's three. Okay, so the order is this one first and then Puppet Show. And then Craig's uh, Ranger Training one and then the Christmas Eve one and then the very first episode where it talks about the strangers. Interesting, yeah. Ranger Craig didn't make it. I don't think he made it. No, I think I'm pretty sure Craig Craig might be dead. I think. <laughs> Recorded for teaching, so that many people might must be people pretending to be strangers and dress up. Some of it is yes, um, definitely in this one. So I think every stranger we see in this episode is is fake because it is. It is supposed to be um, training episodes. So I'm pretty sure every stranger we see in this episode is Strangers hunt in packs, so attempting to flee is futile. If you find a trail marker with no correlating mark on your master map, scrub the blaze off. Especially, this one's definitely fake. This is definitely a fake. Do not cease fire. Especially because they ignore the cameraman as well. No matter so. how human their cries sound. <laughs> Supernatural legs, yeah. <laughs> what are the comments? Did you survive in New Jersey? <laughs> they have surrendered their body to the forest. And you are doing them a service by freeing their soul. Yeah, so what do you guys think? What do you guys think of it? I, I really enjoy this. Um, I thought this was a great series. Um, not as deep as some of the other ones, and not definitely not as mysterious. It just straight up says, yeah... There's, there's crazy dudes in the forest. Yeah, um, they're eating people. Like, some of the other ones like try and really hide what's going on. This was like, nah, it's, it's just out there. <laughs> yeah, it's the devil. Like, <laughs> and like how I done right. Yeah, I feel like it could be a bit deeper, a bit more mysterious as to what's happening. Um, but I do like, that's more, that's more of like a personal, a personal thing I, I would like about the series. Um, yeah, great presentation, great production like the the latest episodes have fantastic production value i really liked i think I, this might be my favorite episode episode five i really liked it um and like you see you've got this you've got like a you've got the spooky things like right here like straight like you know a minute in boom it's like no it's like oh okay it's not telling you what's spooky but it's like yeah something spooky is happening and then you know, you got that, and then it starts building up more and more and more until the very end. And it's all, it all works in universe as well. It's very consistent, internally consistent. Um, I like how each episode is, is pretty different too in like how it actually portrays what's happening. Like the first one is very standard analog horror, but like with, with higher production value and like real... Like, real people doing stuff, which is cool. Second episode, pure analog horror. Until the... Um, to the point where it's like, okay, we've seen this before. And I think they recognize that. It's like, it's not that amazing. Um, this was a good one. This was also a classic analog horror, but it was, it was interesting. It was very interesting. What was happening. Easy episode is for a different target audience. I don't know if it was a different target audience. It feels like the creator is very experimental and trying different things. 
because you know you've got this one right afterwards which is again is like you know in quotation marks classic analog horror pure analog horror and it's more interesting um and then after that you go straight from that to a, a live action puppet show which is ridiculous i don't know if they're straight <laughs> Like, that's absolutely fantastic. Like, five different puppets. And then these hand... I, I, don't, I don't know if you can't them as full puppets, but... Thank you for playing Mr. Gundis's game of the day! And then the reveal that they're actually based on dead kids. Like, oh, fuck, oh, brilliant. Just brilliant. Recontextualizes the whole thing. This is a... This is an amazing episode by itself. I think you could probably just watch this episode by itself and, and be really entertained by it. Um, same with this one here. Um, I think that's, that's actually what I think a lot of them miss is that each episode needs to be entertaining in its own right. And that's what a lot of them mess up. And that's what, like going back to what I was talking about before, how the first episode is like just sort of, sort of boring setup a lot of the time. And it's not entertaining in its own right. Um, this one was again, a little, like I said, like I said before, a bit slow at the start, but the second half was, was good. Um, and it's, it's unfortunate that it's almost always the case in analog horror that the first episode is the worst one because that's what people start off, started off with. And so it's not as good. They're still figuring out their style, what they want to do, what story they want to tell. And then they, they, they want to build on that idea. And then their later ones get way, way better. And but the first one like turns a lot of people off because it's not very good. I do, I do think it's best to like, that's why, that's why I, I think it's another good idea to make the first one a, a complete this one off to say, no, this is a self-contained story. If I want to adapt it, I can, like keep going with it. I can, but the story is done, right? If, if I ended it here, that's fine because your first one is probably going to suck. That's usually the case. Unless you have experience with, with video editing and making videos and storytelling, unless you have experience with that, your first one is probably going to suck. That's just how it is, right? You know, nobody, nobody picks up a bike and starts riding straight away. That's, that's just how people work. So, um, and even in more experienced projects, the first one does tend to be the weakest anyway, unless, unless it's some sort of miracle. Like this one, the first one is, I don't know if it's the weakest, but you can definitely tell it's rougher than the, than the later ones. Like, you know, uh, four and five are like way better than the first, the first, uh, first two and a lot better than the second and the third one. Um, and then, and then, you know, going back to Valverde, which, which again is, is Valverde is a special case, but I, I think it's a good way to sort of highlight a, a series that does basically everything right. I think Valverde, I think it is, you've got to try very hard to poke holes in Valverde. Um, and and the reason why is because it's made by somebody who is familiar with with telling stories and is familiar with making videos and making art like that. Because, you know, like you said, he made it as an animation reel, right? He made it to get, he made it to get work. <laughs> and he's an industry professional. So he knows how to do this stuff, which is why it's so good. Um, but it paces, it paces the horror really well. It paces the story really well. It, it paces the reveals. The art is just astonishingly good in Valverde. Like, I think it might be the one with the best art I've seen. Just, just full stop. Um, and that's because he has experience in the field. Like, if he, if he came in absolutely clean, he wouldn't be able to make anything half as good as that. But that's because that's just, just you know, that's, people just can't. You know, you can't, you can't go from nothing to something like that, right? Um, so, yeah, I do think it's, it's worth doing something that this, this ends up being a discussion about analog horror in general. <laughs> and analog horror is definitely... Analog horror is definitely one of those things that is easy for people to get into. It has a very low skill floor, a very low entry level. Um, and that's what's led to its bad reputation. That's the same as like Unity games. They had a, such a bad reputation for a very long time because they had such a low entry level. And how are you doing, Ken Julius? And, um, you know, I think, I think it's definitely worth, you know, uh, trying, you know, I'm not saying don't do it. Like, you know, absolutely. If you want to make it up, go, go nuts, you know, at the end of the day, make whatever you want. Right. But I do think it's best for creators to, to start with something, um, 
to start with something smaller and simpler to, to get to, you know, get used to it before jumping into a bigger project. Um, because, you know, it's going to be hard. It's going to be a lot harder than you realize to make what you want. And your sense of taste develops as well. Your sense of taste isn't as good as you think it is. It never is. <laughs> so um, ideas that you think are great before you get into actually making it end up usually not being that good. That's like, you know, the idea of, uh, in, again, going back to games, this is one of those things where it's like idea guys come up with all these fantastic ideas for games, but then if you actually sit there and try and make it, they don't work and you don't realize that until you actually get in there and try and make it. <laughs> Unity quality, exactly. Like, there's nothing wrong with Unity. Well, before they went crazy, like the actual engine itself, right? Not, not, not counting the corporate side. Oops. The actual engine itself, there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't make games bad. It was just a, a lot of people that were inexperienced using it and releasing it as their first games and it had the big splash screen saying, this is a Unity game. It sucks. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Valverde is amazing and I'm not surprised Lone is a pro yeah yeah because uh, we, when we were watching Valverde the um, Alluvium the creator actually came in and uh, he, was, he was chatting with us and yeah the, the idea was like he made it to get as a, as a portfolio piece to get work um, and yeah, I, think, I, I, I don't know I think it's a pretty good it's pretty good <laughs> it's pretty good <laughs> oh, but yeah um Sorry for that aside about analog horror in general, but no, I'm, I really like White Stag. Um, production wise and quality wise, amazing. Like pretty good, pretty good. Very high, high quality. Um, fun. I wouldn't say that it's particularly deep. It's not trying to be though, is it? Like it's not really trying to be that deep. Um, <clears throat> I think it's just like, I think it's, it's more trying to just tell a, tell a fun little story. And I think it's doing a very good job at that. Um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. It's one of those things where I'm not, it's not trying to set up like a full story is the thing. Um, like there's no sort of like, like there's no, there are some lingering questions like, like what happened to, like what's, what's in, under the church, right? What's the deal with the church and that? But it's like, what's like, is there much else? Like the church thing almost seems to have been forgotten because it's been like four, like three episodes since then and it hasn't come up again. So no, yeah, no overarching narrative. Yeah, I feel like there could be a bit more of a hook in that regard. And yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming. Uh, how you doing, Mick? Uh, Mick? Welcome back. Um, yeah, good legs. <laughs> this is per per Calais, tell you. Percolay whipping out his legs. Um, yeah, I feel like there could be a bit more of a hook, and th this is just more a bit more personal, right? You know, I think I don't think that they're, they're aiming for that. That's the impression I get anyway. They're not aiming for that, and it's just um, telling fun stories set in this world where there's weird monsters in the forest. It's, it's fun, you know. But you know, we'll see. We'll see where they go from here. Um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see. See where they go. What would you do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> okay, we might take a short break before we go on to... Before we go on to... Um, what's it called again? Uh, Buckshot Roulette. We're playing Buckshot Roulette is what we're playing. So we'll take a short. Oh yeah! By the way, uh, here I'll just I'll just relink uh, West Stag Education again. So make sure to go check them out if you like that. I really enjoyed it. Uh, make sure to go subscribe. Uh, so and let them know if you want more episodes. I sorry to interrupt you. I just watched your video about the tragic stories of Fury and Hunger. It's very well made. I enjoyed it. Well, thank you very much, Belly. I really appreciate that. That's my. Um, I'm I'm glad you think it's well made. That was my favorite video I've made so far. My next one's going to be even better. I say. Um, but yeah, that, that's actually, that is legitimately my favorite video I've made so far. So I'm very, very pleased to hear that you think it's well made. Thank you very much. Uh, I fell into the classic world booting trap, took up 90% of the creator's attention. Then <laughs> remember they should have had a solid plot. <laughs> yeah, look, look, uh, it's, it's hard to tell what their intention is. I don't, it doesn't feel like they want an overarching plot is the thing. And you know, that's fair. That's fair. I, yeah, you know, like, I, yeah, I would like a, like a plot, right? Um, but. It's not, it's not necessary in web horror series. I don't think that they need a plot. 
as long as each as long as each episode is entertaining and it has been right it, it has been entertaining so um i don't think it's necessary for this um but you know we'll see we'll see where it goes right we'll have to when it, when it comes back up we'll uh we'll, we'll catch up with it and, and watch it heard about buckshot roulette very inscription like yes it is it is it looks sick Buckshot Roulette has some nice vibes. Yeah, I've seen some screen. I haven't looked too much into it because I want to go in as blind as possible, but I saw uh, a couple of uh, Twitter videos and pictures and stuff. It looks sick, so. Less is best for another case of show, not tell. Yeah, you're right. Watch yourself. I've got video many times over. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad. I want to... I would like to, at some point, I'm not promising this video, but I would like to, at some point, make a full, complete... Fear and Hunger law video that's like four hours long, um, and so I, I which would which would effectively be a remake of all my old videos, uh, because I don't like them. I don't like my my old law videos very much anymore. I, I think the the editing is very bad in them, and I could do it way better. Um, yeah, I, that's what I, that's why. I, my long-term plans. I don't. I'm not. I'm not saying I'm definitely going to do that, but I think I'd like to. Imagine rendering that video. <laughs> oh man, I need a. I need another hard drive for that. I think. <laughs> Buckshot roulette makes you think. Imagine a shotgun with a revolver chamber. <laughs> that probably exists. Um, okay. Okay. Short break time. Uh, we'll be back very shortly in five minutes. I'm just going to grab a grab a quick drink, refill my water bottle, stretch my legs. Okay. I love your love videos. It's one of the reasons I got into uh, Fear and Hunger to begin with. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, like I, I don't know. It's just I guess it's just my growth as an as an artist. I guess I just look back at them and I think the editing is very sloppy, and the scripting is not the. I guess it's not the direction I want anymore. Like I think I feel it's very info dump, and I don't like that style anymore. Um, I I thought it was. Ex I think it's acceptable to get across that information. But I think it could be done a lot better. So, what software do you use? I use DaVinci Resolve, which has some issues, but it's excellent for a free program. So, rendered a 10 hour long video before. It's not fun. Yeah, wow, that's insane. <laughs> I think the longest I've had to do was. I think it was uh it was the videos uh where I did um Oh hell new next by came out. Sick. Um uh, Valverde ones, I think. I think that one one of them came up to like two and a half hours. No, 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 only two hours. That's not moving my longest. I've had um New God's podcast longer than that. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, no, not that bad then. Um, okay. Okay, we'll we will be uh B, B R B, B R B. That's my B R B video here.
Okay, we are back. Oh, let's get Buckshot Roulette going, huh? Oops. Oh, wait. Yes. Whoa, why is it showing that? Hang on. One sec. This is great. I love it. Okay. Buckshot Roulette. Let's go. Computer game by Mike Klubnicka. Get ready to gamble. Let's go. Afraid. Interactive mouse. Okay. Can I interact with the door? <sighs> Please sign the waiver. <laughs> M A U T H E. Hey, it fits. <laughs> That's cool. One live round, two blanks. I insert the shells in an unknown order. <laughs> Shotgun shooting yourself with a blank skips the dealer's turn. Okay. Dealer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's better to shoot myself, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, shoot the dealer. Ah, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead. Ah. <laughs> Careful now. <laughs> Three live rounds, two blanks. Okay. Dance to the chamber in a hidden sequence. Uh, myself. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's fucking go. <laughs> You're lucky it left you with a charge. Get up, Mole. The night is young. Can I interact with anything else? Someone's gonna end me, it's gonna be me, Sigma Grad said exactly. Welcome back. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's fucking go. One live round, two blanks. Okay, well you shoot yourself first. Ah, oh, come on! <laughs> come on! 
careful now. The heart of the ammo. <laughs> Uh, okay. Three live rounds, two blanks. Okay, so three live rounds, two blanks. So chances are, shoot the dealer. Got him! Got him, you son of a bitch! <laughs> Okay, so that means there's two live rounds and one blank left, so that chances are shoot him. Got him! <laughs> yes! Yes! I win! I win! I win! Let's make this a little more interesting. What the hell? Two items each. More items before every load. <laughs> One live round. One blank. Dealer skips the next turn. You rack the shotgun and rounds. Oh, oh, that's interesting. So I know what order they're in. Okay. Um, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna deal this gifts next round. And then I'm just gonna shoot him. Nice, get owned, get fucking destroyed. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Magnifying glass, hey. General release of liability, God. <laughs> okay. Two, two. Okay. Magnifying glass. Check the current round in the chamber. What is that? Why is there a knife? Die. Okay. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what did that do? Ah. <laughs> oh, it makes it deal double damage. Oh, I'm so screwed. I am. I'm so screwed. Oh, I'm so screwed. Ah, you bastard! <laughs> okay. Three live rounds, two blanks. Okay. Um, three live rounds, two blanks. Let's use it. Get owned. Nice. Abusing the hell out of the magnifying glasses. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. More they wins. Let's go, bros. Let's go. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. Okay. Last round. Long glass. We arrive at the final showdown. 
No more defibrillators. No more blood transfusions. Now, me and you, we're dancing on the edge of life and death. Awesome, 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 awesome. Okay. You know the drill. Takes the edge off, regain one charge. Oh, that's useful. Okay. Um, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to. I'm just going to take my chances here. Oh, you son of a. That's so annoying. That's okay. Oh, we're actually like straight up getting four items. Wow, okay, I actually should use them. <laughs> That's a lot. Okay, so four red. Um, do that. Gain a charge. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. So we'll just shoot it. Shoot it now. No! What did I do that for? I'm a fucking idiot. It's a blank. Oh, what? I didn't mean to do that. I'm such a fucking idiot. I'm dead. Okay. Why did he fuck that up? <laughs> um, oh shit, I've, I've forgotten, I've forgotten. Okay, so we've got... Oh no, okay, so we've got... There were two blanks thrown out. Because I shot a... I shot a blank. He wasted a blank and then he shot himself. Okay, so there's three reds and two... Two greys left. Three reds, two greys. Okay. Um, can I just shoot myself? Okay. Um, handcuff him. We shoot him. Red. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna shotgun. We're gonna we're gonna saw it off. Shoot him. Then we're gonna handcuff him again and shoot him again. Oh. Wait, isn't it my turn? Very interesting. I guess not. I'm fucked. <laughs> okay, so he's got four health.
Okay. Um, the smoke. Handcuff him. Uh, is it the last round? Ah, oh, that was the last round too. I shouldn't have wasted my handcuffs. That's all right. Some ciggies, more ciggies. Can I have magnifying glass? There it is. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Two greys, three reds. Two greys, three reds. Okay. Let's smoke up. Top that health up. Why not? Oh, did he not regain health when he was smoking? Oh! oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it was a sudden death. I didn't realize. I thought I thought it was regaining health, but I guess not. Ooh, that was cool. That was sick. Yeah, that was great. What a great game. Great little game. <laughs> that was um how, how have I forgotten the name already? Um uh, Buckshot Roulette. You can get that here, by the way. Yeah, go check that out. It's like a buck or something like that. It was great. Great, great, great little game. Great aesthetic. Holy crap. How good was that aesthetic? Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Huh. Yeah, very, very, uh, very big inscription vibes, wasn't it? But um, I want to say, yeah, very, very different. Obviously different gameplay wise, right? Um, but I guess, you know... What's the difference between having random items, having random cards? Is there much difference? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think there is. <laughs> Me when I play a little buckshot roulette with the homies IRL. <laughs> to my knowledge, there are different endings. Oh, really? Let's have a look. Um, um. What are so many people saying? Can you buy me this game, please? I like it as a gift. <laughs> In the comments, that's funny, yes. <laughs> so funny um um like i don't see anybody mention different endings but um i don't know i don't know where there would be another ending maybe if you kill yourself right at the end there Anyway, that was sick. That was great. Really enjoyed that. Um, oh shit, there's a wasp in my room. What the hell did you get in here? What the fuck? Hang on, I'll be right back. Be right back one second.
Um, I didn't kill the wasp. I just contained it. Hopefully it goes away. <laughs> this is a bad ending after losing the last round. Ah, okay, okay. I don't feel like playing it again. That's good, though. Um, I think we might... I think we might wrap up here, actually. Um, I don't think I can... I don't think I'll be very entertaining while playing Little Goody Two Shoes today. Um, I'm feeling pretty flat. But thank you very much for coming in. Um, we'll definitely play it next week, though. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming in and hanging out. I, I always, always love it. Um, yeah, so next week... Uh, oh, yes, by the way, um, there is a new episode of the podcast out today. Let me get that link for you. Here you go, new episode. <laughs> Phonesy, yeah, just in time, just in time. Um, and also, uh, please remember to like the video, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and please consider becoming a patron. Um, there you will get, you will get scripts for the videos. Uh, you can get early access to see videos a week early, and you get your name in the video credits, and you see previews of videos. But yeah, thank you very much for coming, you guys. I really, I really like hanging out. And I'll see you guys next week.